One of the fastest growing trends in the United States and other parts of the world right now are electric bicycles and electric scooters, often shortened to e-bikes or e-scooters. Both of these devices are technically known as micromobility devices, and experts say the global micromobility market is poised to grow from a $40 billion industry today to a $215 billion industry by 2030. But did you know that fires involving the batteries that power e-bikes and e-scooters are a growing safety concern? Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. E-bikes are far from a new technology. In fact, the very first electric bicycles emerged in the late 1800s. But it wasn't until the past several years that the design and sale of the devices became a viable business model, spurred mostly by a global push to reduce reliance on gas-powered combustion engines. Proponents of e-bikes say they're a cost-effective, eco-friendly way of getting around, especially in cities. It's been well documented that food delivery drivers in New York City, for instance, rely heavily on e-bikes to make a living. But there is a catch. In New York City alone, e-bikes and e-scooters have been blamed for hundreds of fires, some of those fires fatal. Just this September, an eight-year-old girl died in a fire in Queens that was likely ignited by an e-bike battery. So why do these devices catch fire? Well, e-bikes and e-scooters often use lithium-ion batteries, the same type of battery that powers most electric vehicles. When lithium-ion batteries are damaged, a chemical process known as thermal runaway can occur. This means that the battery cells are quickly getting way hotter than they should. In this state, the batteries can be prone to off-gassing, fires, and even explosions. In the case of e-bikes and e-scooters, fires have also resulted from overcharging batteries, using the wrong charging equipment, and overloading electrical circuits by charging too many devices at once. So what's being done to address the problem? Well, different cities have taken different approaches to addressing the problem. Earlier this year, for example, the New York City Fire Code was amended to require enhanced fire protection measures, such as sprinklers and fire-rated doors, for areas where more than five e-bikes or e-scooters are being stored or charged. But experts doubt those requirements are being enforced. Pretty much any time a city moves towards stricter e-bike and e-scooter regulation, it causes backlash from those who rely on the devices to get around or even make a living. After officials in London announced an e-bike and e-scooter ban for the Palace of Westminster, they received backlash from bicycle advocacy groups and even members of parliament. In a February hearing, a politician who had previously commuted to work on an e-bike called the move an example of creeping managerial control and accused those who made the decision of misinterpreting the fire risks. Similarly, a proposal by the New York City Housing Authority to ban e-bikes and e-scooters altogether from all of New York City's public housing has been met with intense criticism. So how can people stay safe? Well, it's important to recognize that e-bikes and e-scooters do pose a fire safety risk. When shopping for one, look for products that comply with UL standards for electric micromobility devices, such as UL 2849. If you own one already, be smart about how you're charging it. Don't use charging equipment that didn't come with the device. Don't overcharge the device or device battery or leave it plugged in overnight. Don't charge multiple devices at once from one outlet. And if you damage your bike or scooter or think it needs repairs, only get those done from a qualified professional. Thanks for watching. If you like these Learn Something New videos, please let us know by leaving us a positive comment and sharing them with your friends and colleagues. As always, be sure to subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this.